The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. I need to praise God. You know, God's people in the Old Testament, there was a tribe called the tribe of Judah that the Lord came from. And and Judah, in the Hebrew language, there's no J, by the way. I don't know who did those translations in those years past, but... um, Even the word Jew is not really Jew, it's Ye- Yehudi. Yehudi is Jew. And Yehudim is a plural and comes from the tribe of Judah, Yehuda. Yehuda. That means a tribe that is a praiser. And giver of thanks, Yehuda. We say Tuda in Hebrew. Tuda means thank you. So it's a tribe that gives thanks all the time and praises God. Yehu stands for God. God's name, uh, abbreviation for God's name, Yehu or Yahweh is the full name of God. So, God's people are God's praisers. We give thanksgiving, we give praise to God. We do not want to be found to complain about God because something did not go right in our lives. What we need to do is understand the purpose of God through the trial and understand that the outcome is going to be great and victorious for us because we have been promised to be more than conquerors through him who loved us. And the minute you start complaining, you are succumbing to to defeat. So we are not complainers as the people of God, but we are praisers and and people who give thanks all the time, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but all year round and every single hour and every single time that something happens, we give thanks to the Lord. If it's good, we give thanks to the Lord. If it's bad, we give thanks to the Lord because the bad is going to turn to be good. We're not thanking him for the bad. We're thanking him for the good out of the bad. Amen? Thanksgiving. So uh, we have Psalm 145 this morning. Psalms 145. And... We're going to read 21 verses. It's a psalm of praise. David wrote the whole psalm. It's a psalm of praise. Now, Psalm 86 was written as a psalm of prayer that David wrote. How many know that David had the Spirit of the Lord? When he wrote, he wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So, David wrote Psalm 86, it was a psalm of prayer. And he wrote about prayer in many different chapters. And he wrote about praise in many different chapters. But this is a psalm of praise. Just like 86, Psalm 86 was a psalm of prayer. Now it's so important that God uh, put it on David's heart to put this down to let the church understand that we need to be praisers at all times. 
Now, that doesn't mean that you've got to be singing 24-7, but you can be praising and singing and praising and giving thanks 24-7. If you learn not to complain and you learn to be a praiser, the presence of the Lord, as we spoke about last week, praising God will bring in his presence. And then he is there to perform a miracle for you. Because his presence will be there because you are a God praiser and you're praising him all the time and you stop complaining about your husband, about your wife, about your children and begin to praise God for the good out of your wife and, and husband and children and everyone that you come in contact with instead of complaining about them. I mean, what do people do when, when you go out in, in, in public, you know? Everybody's complaining about everybody else. Some like the president, some don't like the president, some speak against the president, some speak for the president. I mean, we're used to that. We're always complaining about something. And we complain about the government, and we might be complain about the congressman, or we might, uh, I mean, we always have something to say bad or we want to let people know that we're intelligent and so the mayor is bad you know <laughs> or good you know either way you just want to sound intelligent like you know your business okay that's not what it's all about it's it's about praising god praising god for everything in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Didn't it, didn't it say in everything? So why are you complaining about anything? Uh, we've come to God. We've come to the word of God. We want to hear from God. We pray without ceasing. How do you pray without ceasing unless you're giving thanks to the Lord for everything and in everything? Somebody complained about the pastor right a minute ago. <laughs> That's all right, as long as you don't complain about God. <laughs> so we're going to read this psalm. Verse 1, I will extol thee, my God, O King. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Now, his name is Yahweh. So the psalmist is saying, I'm going to bless Yahweh, God's name, forever and ever. I want to bless God's name. You know, some people go around saying, well, God didn't deal with me right. I don't know what's the matter with God, why he's not treating me right, you know. And uh, God's people never talk like that. We're always going to bless Yahweh. Verse 2, every day will I bless thee. Every how many days? Once a year? Every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Here's the word praise. In the first verse, he says, I will bless your name. And then in the next verse, he says, I will praise your name. So praising God's name. Let me tell you what you say without realizing that you're praising God's name. Did you ever hear yourself say hallelujah? You know what hallelujah is? Praise be to God. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. You're praising Yahweh. I will praise your name. Hallelujah. That's how you praise his name. His name is Yahweh. All right? 
praise, I will praise your name. Forever and ever. Hey, listen. I want to tell you something about the Lord. Verse 3. Great is the Lord. Uh, where it says Lord here, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, where it says Lord, they translated it from the Hebrew. Actually, it's God's name. Great is Yahweh. And greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Even if you search it about his greatness, his, I mean, even if you think about the way the universe that he created, the uh, light years that it will take for you to get from one planet to another planet, you know, you wouldn't have enough life, enough years in your life to make it to another planet. I, I tell you, it's vast. The universe is vast. And think about his greatness. When you think even about man, how intricate we were made. It's marvelous. It's, it's a miraculous way, the way God made us, every portion of us, and the way we uh, function. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to get into the medical part of it, how your body functions, but God created us that way. So his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another. It goes from one generation to the next generation. The older generation, they're praising God's work and telling the younger generation about God's work. And shall declare thy mighty acts. So they're, they're declaring the work of the Lord. They're declaring the work of the cross. They're declaring the power of God to save. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty <coughs> and of thy wondrous works. You know that word wondrous translated from the Hebrew language wonder or pele. P-E-L-E-H, Pele, which means miracle, wonder or a miracle, okay? So, God's works are miraculous, all right? And men shall speak of the might of the terrible acts. I will declare thy greatness. What are we supposed to do? Declare his greatness. How do we declare his greatness? New Testament covenant. We declare his word. We, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. We declare the gospel. They shall utterly, abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. We're going to talk about the history of God and how he did things. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Let me tell you this. It doesn't say here the Lord is mean. And he's waiting for you to do something wrong so he can hit you with a hammer. That's not what God is. The Lord is gracious. And full of compassion. Slow to anger. I mean, when I read in the Old Testament how long it took God to be angry with somebody, it took him 400 years. 
Now you and I, we get angry with somebody because they say something wrong to us or maybe it was misconstrued by us and we get angry and don't want to talk to them for months or years. But it takes God a long time before he gets angry. And, and we ought to have God's character and, and We have to have, because we have the Holy Spirit in us and we begin to act like God. How long would it take us to get angry about something? 400 years. If you live that long. <laughs> you stop getting angry. I mean, what's anger going to accomplish? It's not going to accomplish anything. It might cause issues and problems. If you get angry with the, with the car and hit the tire with, the, I mean, kick the tire with your foot, you might hurt your foot and may, may have to have surgery. <laughs> but God is slow to anger and great and of great, great mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. In all thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. Because of what he did, that is praising God. Because of his works. His works declare him. <clears throat> and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. What do we talk about when we get together? Uh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, you know, did you see what they, you know, they should have done it this way because I told them and they didn't listen to me. Is that what God wants you to get involved in? And not talking about anybody here, it's the other church over there. <laughs> <coughs> The saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts. And the glorious majesty, majesty of his kingdom. <coughs> There's a kingdom. The kingdom of God. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And thy dominion endureth through all generations. How many know God is in charge? I like this about God. The Lord, Yahweh, I told you where it says, it says Lord. The original says Yahweh, God's name. The Lord upholdeth all that fall. You know what we do sometimes if somebody falls? You know what we do? We say, uh, good for them. They deserve it. They deserve it, but, you know. Does that remind you of somebody? What does God do? <laughs> God picks them up, upholds them. Aren't you glad I'm not God, you're not God? Aren't you glad God is God? And um, so he raiseth up all those are that be bowed down. The eyes of all that wait upon thee, and thou, I'm sorry, the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thank you, Daniel. 
Okay? Do you know what this is saying? That God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand. And satisfies the desire of every living thing. Now that, that's not only men. That's mankind. It's the birds. Uh, he supplies everything to everyone, including the flowers and the grass of the field. It costs God millions of dollars a day to feed the birds. You know, he's the one who feeds birds. Now, he's not worried about that money that he spends on the birds. Do you think he's worried about what you need? And if he supplies the birds of the air and the grass of the field, how much more will he supply you, O ye of little faith, Jesus said. You worried about clothing? He clothed the grass of the field. He said even Solomon, the way he was arrayed, was he, he was clothed. He says, you will clothe you even with better than Solomon and with better than the grass of the field. There's nothing wrong with nice outfits, folks. Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. It's not revealing outfits. I'm talking about real nice outfits. I mean, God didn't create us to go half naked. He clothed us to the fullest. And you can't go say, Pastor was complaining about the way I dress, because I didn't. Just telling what God says. The Lord is righteous. In all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. And to all that call upon him in truth. That's according to the word. Everybody that calls upon him according to the word. That truth is the word, by the way. He's going to hear your prayer. You call upon him, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. When you cry unto the Lord, you fear the Lord, you obey the Lord, you walk in his commandments and in his, according to his word, he hears you. And he will save you. Amen. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of Yahweh. Let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. So, praise God for who he is. Praise God for his greatness. Praise God for his goodness. Praise God for his glory. Praise God for his dominion. Praise God for his grace. Praise God because he is God. Praise him because he is a king. Praise him because he is great. Praise him because he is gracious. Praise him because he is full of compassion. 
Praise him because he is slow to anger. Praise him because he is great in mercy. Praise him because he is good to all. Praise him because he is tender and merciful to all creation. He is righteous in all his ways. He is holy in all his works. He is near to all who pray in truth. You know, verses 10 and 11, And thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of thy glory, of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy, thy power. Amen. The kingdom of God is around. The kingdom of God is where the king is, where Jesus is in our midst. Malachi 3.16 says, They that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought about his name. See, God said, I, I, I want you to bring here a book, and it's a memoir book that God has, and he records when we talk about him and we think and Declare his name. There's some great meanings to his name. And God is delighted in us. He delights in our conversation. And he records our conversation. And he makes, us, he makes a record of what we talk about. That's why you've got to be careful what you say. What you utter is always, always needs to be praised. Words of encouragement, words of assurance, words that heal. Don't hurt anybody. We learned to hurt people when we were younger. We brought up in the negative world. Now that we are saved, God is changing the direction. Now we're gonna, we need, need to heal people because they're suffering they're hurting and they don't need to be injured any longer they need to be bandaged with love and with the balm of Gilead we need to pour the balm of Gilead upon them and the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost that's what people need to hear they need to get healed because everybody hurts at one point or another. Is, everybody, is anybody here never been hurt by somebody? Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 730 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 1030. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.